So my name's Quinn Cowan, I'm the CFO of the Investor Central Group, and I'd just like to share a couple of headline numbers before moving on. So two numbers that I always like to talk about is one is our, our provision and doubtful debt expense to revenue. Now for the 23 year that came in at 15.6%. That was up 3% from the prior year, but within our budgets of, underneath our budgets of 17 to 19%. <coughs> The other number I like to talk about is our net profit after tax. That was up 2.9 million from 8.8 .8 to 11.7 million for the year. These are great results and true dedication and hard work of all of the team and Investor Central Group. So thank you to all of them. <laughs> Investor Central as an unlisted public company has its uh, records externally audited every six months, and here today to give a brief overview of that process is Darren Tam from Jessup's. So please welcome Darren Tam. Uh, welcome all. Um, for those that may have been here, I will try and keep this short and brief. The auditor is never the most popular speaker up here. So I'll move on quickly to Jamie and Darren once I can get through. For those in the room that haven't been to a lunch before or don't know who I am, my name's Darren, Darren Tam. I'm an auditor. I own a small accounting firm here in Cairns and Townsville. So, Bought into Jessup's 2016, 2017 I started with the Jessup's firm as an employee. And Jamie was, um, or the Investor Central Group was one of my clients here in Townsville. It was quite entertaining. Went out, I got a little bit lost and ended up in a place called Launch Zone. I wasn't sure if that was Jamie's business model or if it was actually um, something to do with the ups and downs of being in the finance industry, but it turned out I was in the wrong, business, wrong building. So I went next door and Finance One and Investor Central were located there. So the ups and downs of business that Jamie's experienced over the well, six, seven years that I've been involved, we've seen the growth of the business, we've seen it expanding into various different loan products, um, the growth of the commercial loan product portfolio, we've moved, business, we've moved premises and into a, a larger building. Then COVID-19 came along. We can all remember that has been quite an exciting time. Um, and expanded into the Brisbane office. Um, and we're also looking at diversif diversification in the funding sources. Why is that relevant? I'm the auditor, so you guys are looking at someone to provide external verification of the accounts, to have some trust in those numbers. And it's funny, everyone in the room goes, oh, you're the auditor, great. Should I invest with Investor Central? And I have to respond with, I cannot give financial advice. I'm an auditor. So I just give you comfort that the numbers that you will see are the numbers that are actually based on reality. Um, so can't give you any financial advice, just so you know. But who can are the people that have invested with Jamie over many, many years, of which I believe there are a number here in the room. What I look for is risk and trying to understand the risks of the business. And what I like about Jamie's business is that you look through the numbers at the people, and that's what can make or break a business. The ability for a business to adapt, the ability for the business to grow, and grow well, the staff having respect, the boss having respect for staff. Now you can see them in the room, go and talk to them. Ask them what they think it's like to work for Jamie. That'll give you your answer. Should I invest? He likes his people. I'm here. If you need to ask any questions about the finances or anything else, just come and talk to me afterwards. And that's it. I'm only allowed a minute, so we'll get off the stage. <laughs> Thank you, Darren. Thank you for sticking to your time slot, too. Next, I'd like to introduce the, our, uh, what's the only one? The managing director of Investor Central, Jamie McGakey. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be with you this afternoon for the presentation of our financial results for 2023. I was just asked before, is uh, Ian Jessup used to be a part of the audit team and in the business, and uh, is he still auditing? And I said, oh, Ian ended up selling to Darren, 
and there was an exclusion period. I hope Ian doesn't mind me mentioning this, but he used to personally come out and order, audit our accounts, especially in the early days, because he was wondering, my gosh, who are these people uh, you know, providing loans? And uh, one of the proudest things I'm, uh, about our business is it's the care that we take with each customer in making sure that we provide them every opportunity possible to treat them with dignity, but also to pay back the loan that they have, a, have with us. So we have a flexibility about our care that we do that provides us competitive advantage away from other finance companies. And I was talking to Ian just last weekend, and uh, Ian, after his exclusion of being an auditor, then became an investor in our company. So I'm very proud of that relationship. I'm also extremely grateful for the support that we've had for all our investors and the relationships that we've been able to build with all of you over an extended period of time. I have to pinch myself to be a part of this organisation. I am truly lucky. Some of our team members are here today. They are the everyday heroes that we have a part of our organisation. They're the ones that not only have a responsibility. So the weight at times that we have over our business of making sure that we meet our expectations and meet our responsibilities to investors is huge. And I don't take that for granted and I won't let you down. But it's the responsibility at Finance One that we have for each other, making sure that we don't each, uh, let each other down, and that competitive spirit of doing more uh, time and time again. It's an absolute pleasure and it's a rush to be a part of that organisation. So I'm very pleased and I'm very grateful for all the team that I work with. And one of my favourite sayings is nobody works for me. I work for, the, for, the, for you. I work for them because they are only two weeks away from leaving. If I don't provide an environment where they're proud of and they feel a part of, then they will leave. It's as simple as that. We've worked hard over the last 12 months and I'm very pleased to announce we've had another stellar period for 2023, resulting in record profit across the board. We've expanded our business structure and locations. Our investors have an opportunity to invest in our company and we own the subsidiaries of Finance One, commercial credit control, and strategic collections. You as an investor, invest in Investor Central. It owns those wholly owned subsidiaries and lends them money. You have rank first in preference to be paid above ordinary shareholders, which is myself and my wife, in preference to be paid. That's what provides investors the security to be able to know the company that they're investing in. These events are really important for you to gain an understanding into our business model too, which also provides you the comfort of understanding the business that you're investing in. We've expanded our locations to Brisbane and the Gold Coast in purchasing a, a business which is a collections business of commercial credit control. It was established in 1996 and we've had it under our umbrella for two years now. This provides us a further diversification of revenue, which is important to our company, but also the capabilities to continue the work in case uh, there's a Category 5 cyclone that moves through Townsville and, and wipes out our site here for any reason. So we've got team members that are growing to nearly 200 now uh, across those three locations. What was really important for us is to make sure that the DNA that we had in Townsville was replicated in those locations. That care that we've got for our customer base and each other was also paramount within those teams. And I'm very pleased, we've worked really hard, but we've been able to do that. We wrote our one billionth dollar in loans this, just this year gone, which was a fantastic milestone event for the company, along with our investors and all the finance brokers that promote our range of products. This has been built on 26 years 
of lending and collecting money experience. 14 years now, we're in our 14th year from when we first borrowed money from investors. The business has grown over the, that period of time, year on year, through the discipline of making profits every year. We've also expanded our funding structures too. Not only do we have investors into the company, now we have a ring-fenced funding structure which is called the Investor Central Trust Series. This sits outside the group. This is really important. This enables us to raise capital for future growth of our loan book, but they don't have a lien over Investor Central. These are ring-fenced with pools of loans that we carve off that sit aside that those investors, those institutional investors, are able to invest through. What's good, though, is after the interest is obviously paid to them, all the profits flow back up to those, uh, back into the Investor Central Group, further providing further protection for our investor group. We've invested in growth through our teams, our infrastructure and our location which has been really important. It was vital that we find the right team members that are going to come and join our group with the balance of experience, but also the care that they have for each other as well. That was paramount to us. And I'm really pleased with the, the new talent that we've got on board, along with the existing old heads that we've got on board. Uh, now we are able to grow our company and we've really invested in those people and part of that was welcoming Ashish to the team. I'll just get Ashish to stand up. Ashish has joined our team. He was our tre a Treasury Manager for Greater Australian Bank, and now he is our Head of Treasury for the Investor Central Group. It's quite complex now, the organisation, with these separate trusts. We've got to make sure that we meet all our obligations to all those financial institutions as well as to investors. And he's doing a remarkable job. We offer a fixed interest return. It's paid monthly, providing a steady income stream to our investors. Through these asset-backed securities, it provides extra capital because we've outgrown just the investor base. So we have a loan book today of over $456 million. And I'm really pleased with the progress, and uh, Darren will update you later, on the progress that we've made with commercial credit control and strategic collections. The company is led by a driven team of executives whom have consistently delivered increased profits and strong returns to all our investors. The directors, they're also investors with their own capital invested into the business. And 30% of the Finance One team are investors also with their capital invested into the business. What we allow is our, our team members can invest through the prospectus from a minimum of $1,000. To get them started though, all they need to do is save $500 and we will match them the next $500. That way they have a skin in the game and it's a perfect, perfect investment vehicle for them to start an investment off and maybe save for a home or save for a bigger purchase. So I, I love having them apart. Investor Central is free from any fees and charges to you which sets us apart from many similar investments. Computer shares our share registry it's the, it issues share certificates in the company, along with doing the monthly interest payments back to our investors' nominated bank accounts. For two years, I was looking for the right person to come and join our organisation and a CEO. At some point there, we thought we may have to move to Brisbane as our team expanded, uh, but we really didn't want to move away from Townsville. Uh, it's been my home for all my life, and I thoroughly enjoy having my family here and we've kind of set up a, a bit of a hub for ourselves here. So it, wasn't, it was something that we would do if we needed to, but we wanted also, as the business grew, a level of structure and great governance to go to that next level. So for two years, I was looking for somebody to come and help. Last year, you got an opportunity to meet Darren Cantor uh, as CEO of our organisation. Darren's got about 18 months under his belt now and he's got a good understanding of our business and he's contributed well to our organisation in setting us a good structure and governance so we can launch to the next level. 
I'm going to ask Darren to come up and run through what he's seen over the last 12 months and also run through some of the financial numbers for you. Darren. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for introducing me, Jamie. Yes, so I've uh, not quite 18 months. I was here for uh, last year's lunch. I'd been in the chair for about uh, four weeks, so uh, it's uh, I'm, I'm a lot more experienced than I was uh, this time last year. So it's been a whirlwind. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed um, my journey over these last sort of uh, 12, 13 months. Um, I want to call out the fact that I really appreciate Jamie's uh, support you know, and give me an opportunity to, to do this. So. For those who don't know my background, probably best I start to give you a bit, a bit more experience. I've been in the finance game for too long, as my wife might suggest, but I'm best part of 20 years now. Um, coming from a range of different backgrounds, uh, I started in collections at St George Bank, uh, which is an important part of what, what we do here. Moved over to Macquarie Bank as well, uh, also in the collections business, and then before moving into, into sales and, and various leadership roles. So, uh, and then went into non-bank lending and mortgage broking aggregation. So across that spectrum, I've had a range of different um, roles, which is, uh, I suppose, what's placed me in uh, hopefully a good stead to, to be successful here. I had the, the luxury of meeting Jamie. It was quite opportunistic. It wasn't something that I was necessarily looking for, but anyone who's met Jamie, it's pretty, it's pretty whirlwind, isn't it? It's pretty full on. And it's uh, <laughs> sort of like I left that meeting. I rang my wife and said, I think I'm moving to Brisbane. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I came, I've moved up from, uh, moved up from Sydney with my, my wife and my three daughters and uh, we're really pleased to, to be in Brisbane and absolutely loving everything so, um, and loving the heat and this, this nice weather. Um, I'm thrilled to be here today to talk about a great set of numbers and, and update you on, on how the company's performed over the last 12 months and uh, we're really pleased with what we're doing. Um, we've, as Jamie suggested there, we've, we've strengthened the team across three locations and um, I'm, I feel very confident that we have... You know, you know, taking over from Jamie is uh, not a small thing to do, but it's not a job for one man, I can assure you. It's a job for a number of different people, so we've really taken the opportunity to, to, to strengthen the team, and I feel really comfortable with, with where we're at. We've had a record year of lending. You can see that we've uh, processed over 40,000 loans. So that's a 50% increase on last year. So for those long-term investors who might see some of our staff with a bit more grey hair and a few more wrinkles, that's why because that's, uh, it's, it's been full on. Interesting enough that you can see that the loan settled is uh, 9,000 loans, which is, but that's up 17%. So whilst we've received 50% more applications, if you can see that we've done there, we've been very prudent about what we've lent, who we've lent to. Um, so there's no shortage of business out there, but what we want to be doing is making sure we're writing the right business, obviously to protect the, back, the, 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 the book and to make sure that our profits uh, are sustainable. So. Um, you can see the loans written there at 250 mil, and that's gone up 30%. So whilst our amount of loans went up 17%, the balance went up 30%, and that's largely contributed to the fact that our commercial portfolio continue to, continues to grow. About two thirds, of, uh, one third of our business now is commercial, but on a month-to-month -month basis now, about 50% of what we do is actually commercial loans, and we see some huge opportunities moving forward there. So it's been a very hectic year. The current state of our portfolio, we've got 21,000 accounts now, so our risk is well spread. I think that's a really important part. We don't have huge exposure to any one particular individual or companies that may bring us down. We have really diversified our risk there, which is really important. Our loan balance at June 34, 39, I think it's about 465 um, now. And our average loan amount's you know, 27,000 there. So we see that uh, increasing uh, over, as we continue to expand into commercial. We're really comfortable with, with that space and we see the opportunity to grow and into some bigger ticket items as well. So really big year uh, and I want to thank the staff. Jamie called out a number of staff. It's too many to think, but the fact that we've got 200 staff supporting the growth of this business, um, you know, it, it's been a huge amount of commitment for everybody. So I thank them as well. As per, you know, what I'd like to show here is employee growth. So you can see uh, that the top line there is our portfolio growth and we've got our employee growth. And as you can see, they're sort of running in relatively parallel, you know, similar trend lines there. The opportunity for the business is actually invest in our technology to ensure that we can become even more efficient. So as a business, if we can continue with that portfolio growth, but um, you know, sort of maintain our staffing levels or slightly increase our staffing levels, obviously that increases 
the profit to this business and therefore you know, uh, profit back to our investors. So that's a goal for us over the next couple of years. You know, we, we are, we've grown significantly. I think when I started a year ago, we may have had 20, 25 people in, in Brisbane. You might be surprised to know that we've actually got about 70 people in Brisbane now. And we're actually at the stage now that we're looking to uh, potentially move into a new office because we may be running out of space quite soon. So um, that's been a great success story. And with all those new people, it's really just added a, a different level of, level of talent into our business, different skills, different backgrounds. And it's fantastic to have a, effectively a replica of Townsville business actually in Brisbane. So it gives us that, um, a str that strength. Just a bit of a, a blueprint of what we do as a business. Um, obviously people, we, we've invested in people. Um, Jamie, Jamie has, was doing it a lot on his own for a long period of time with Quinn, um, but it became a bit much for him, understandably so. So we've, we've, we've uh, invested heavily in people and, and um, you know, we, we've, we're so comfortable that, that we've got the right people to scale the business. Obviously we watch our financials like you'd expect us to. Uh, and our values are underpinned amongst a number of things, integrity and our customer commitment. Um, we, take, we, we take those very seriously. And I talked about the infrastructure before. We, we, we've got an opportunity to invest in our infrastructure. Um, that'll, that'll be the springboard to make us um, even more efficient, more scalable, uh, and in and, and, and the long term be more profitable. What's important, though, that is protected by the outer ring of governance, um, one that uh, we, we take extremely seriously is make sure every decision we make has to be in line with what you'd expect from us as investors um, to make sure that we're not doing anything short with a short-term view, we're not doing anything with unnecessary risk. We really make sure that we t we stress test everything to make before we make any decisions, and um, that's that outer layer, if you like. That's that protection, and um, we've got a lady by the name of Nisha, uh, who's our general counsel, in who's in Brisbane. If you've met Nisha, nothing gets past her without her being you know, all over it. She keeps us very honest, which is what we're after. From a risk management point of view, so as Quinn alluded to, we've, um, we've, our provision for doubtful debts um, had, it came in at 15.5% and we sort of earmarked that next year might be about 17 to 19% ban. So, um, you know, the economy, as we know, has, has some challenges there, so we're predicting that it could be a little bit more challenging, but we've got $22 million worth of uh, capital set aside for provision, so we are really well protected there and... Uh, we are continually, each month, looking to up that to ensure that if there is any unforeseen shocks in the market, that um, we are well protected and therefore you as investors are well protected. Our arrears curve, this is the one that Jamie rings me from in Canada when things aren't going well. That was my first introduction last December. Yeah, I think the question was, do I have to come home from Canada? I said, no, pump the brakes, we'll be okay. It's, it's all good. So that was around about that peak when he left. So I think what he was trying to say was that he left and it went up. So I think he, was taking, he thought it was all about him, but uh, it wasn't. Um, I can assure you we've... Uh, but we've, what we have done is we've really invested in our people. We've actually, as we said, we've got 200 people. You might be surprised to know that one third of that 200 is actually in a collections-based role. All right, so when people ask, you know, what are you doing to ensure that uh, my, your, your investment, and I say my investment too because I'm an investor in this company, um, we've got one third of our staff committed to making sure we get paid back by our customers. All right, so um, that's hopefully, and we're seeing that curve trend down there, and um, we've, I, feel, I feel that we've got a really good team, really well led across three different sites um, to ensure that uh, any growth that we do, we're doing so with a view that it's there for the long term. This chart here, this is essentially a write-off tolerance. This is stress testing that, you know, in, if we have any you know, bad events or unforeseen events. You can see there that you know, over the next six years, we've got $620-odd million worth of principal interest to be paid back by our clients. But, we, but in, from an investor's point of view, um, we, we owe 350-odd million there. So we've got a lot of buffer there, which is your protection as an investor. So... You know, you can see there if it's stress test at current levels versus you know doubling that or even you know four or five times that, um, we are so well so well positioned to cope with whatever might come our way. So, one thing as a, as a as a board, I can say from a board of directors' perspective, the first thing we talk about every single month is how is the how is the the position of the of the, of the book? How healthy is it? Do we need to top up the provision? Do we need to add, add a layer of protection there? That comes first and foremost before anything we discuss. So. This is, without doubt, the most important thing for us. I'm thrilled to actually announce the actual financials there. So we almost made $100 million of revenue. So we were watching it as the months were rolling on. We thought we were a real chance. But 
We just fell short of that, but um, the fact that we've increased our revenue to 98 million is, is absolutely fantastic. So I'm thrilled that next year, barring any other same circumstances, we'll get over 100 mil. We would have got there earlier if you stayed longer. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, what? <laughs> but, um, Look, interest expense there, cost of capital has gone up, and we've, we've int uh, Jamie introduced to Shish, who's been a, a tremendous um, addition to our team to, to, to expand on the work that Quinn and his team have done. So um, our business has become quite diversified, and our you know, cost of capital and, and the various streams of capital we have, any opportunity for us to, to make sure that we've got money. I, I, I always walk past a Shish, and I always say to my team, if a Shish is smiling, we've got, good ca we've got capital. If he's frowning, I then panic. Um, so he's not allowed to frown. So, but uh, he's done a, a really good job, and I, I, we're in really great hands there. Our OPEX, um, we've invested, as I, as I keep saying, in people. So uh, one of our goals for, our, for, the, for the team is to ensure that um, as we continue to grow, it's not just people. There'll always be people we add, but we want to add people and give them the technology to become even more efficient to, to get the best out of our people. Most importantly, as Quinn alluded to, we've had a net profit before tax of, of 16.8 um, 16 million, which is up on last year, quite, you know, quite happy with our growth and net profit after tax 11.7. So the company is, has performed extremely well the last 12 months. And with total assets now over, over half a billion dollars. And one thing I look at is, you know, is, is the retained earnings and the return on equity there. So when looking at joining this company uh, and you know, deciding whether I move my family up, um, one thing I look at is you know, who, who Who's the owner of the company? What are they about? What are they trying to do? I can say with confidence that what I love about Jamie is, is his passion and desire to reinvest the profits back into the company, to not only to protect the company, but to enable us to grow. So um, we all owe Jamie and Dee um, you know, a great debt of gratitude that they're not trying to do anything short term here. This is a long play. And um, I, I feel it's, it's, it, from our team's perspective, it's so exciting. You know, Jamie has challenged us as a team to continue to grow this company. And in typical Jamie style, they're quite aggressive targets. And I'm nodding smile. Yeah, we'll get them. Yeah, no problem, no problem. But uh, it's going to be a challenge. But we, we've got everything in our, at our power to be successful. Um, we're well capitalised. We've got great people. We've got a founder that's gen generally supportive of what we're doing. And, um, and the market's coming to us. You know, one of the things that we looked at was um, from one of our collections business. You look, our collections business right now, from, it's a it's, it, it, modest contribution to profit, but it's a big area of growth for us. We see a huge opportunity to, to expand our profits, and, and then there will come a day where you know, maybe half our, half our profit may, may even come from our collections businesses because there is huge opportunities there. So, again, thank you so much for your time. Um, I, I, I'm thrilled to be here today and, and, and uh, to present what I hope is a, a good set of numbers. And um, I look forward to the next several years. Um, where we continue to deliver you know, these stellar results uh, and continue to repay the faith that you've shown in us in investing your money into the company. So thank you again. Thanks, Darren, for the financials, but also the, the little bit of banter there as well. It's very good. One of the questions when a new team member comes and joins our organisation is... Is it true? Like an investor, is it true? Um, really, it's an exciting place to walk into each and every day. I thoroughly enjoy the good times that we have, but I love seeing the depth of experience and the depth of character of the team that we've created that loves coming to work, loves supporting each other, and thinks that something's more than just themselves. Uh, that's, that's really important. Darren, I'm very grateful that you've come and joined our organisation and I'm very pleased with the work that you've done thus far. Thank you. We offer... Yeah. You can't do everything on your own. I think my wife was... You led that clap, didn't you? you <laughs> with the diversification of the team, there's a, there's a weight that's been lifted. Now, the weight never leaves me for my responsibility to all of you, but uh, 200 team members, three locations, uh, there's a weight that Darren's been able to lift off my shoulders, which I'm extremely grateful for. Interest rates to our investors. Uh, a lot of our investors would like to go back, can we please, please go back to a 4 or $5 million loan book and 18%. So, 
And then the other question is, when are interest rates going to go back above 10 percent? So um, who knows? But we are, it's really important for us to create a blend of interest rates that continue to attract new investors, but also the existing investors that are market rates where you want to roll over your investment and continue to invest in our company. We offer several opportunities where an investor can invest from 25,000. That's enough for you, Bob. <laughs> Obviously. It's exciting because we've got the mother-in-law out. That's just right. Uh, yeah, several opportunities where you can invest from $25,000. Now, it's really important that you have a balanced portfolio. Um, you gain an understanding into the business model. The interest payments are monthly, but we're only part of somebody's balanced portfolio, only a small part of that. Uh, what we do encourage investors is to start out small and gain an understanding into our business model. And then if you feel comfortable after that, then continue that investment. We've paid over $34 million in interest to our investors, uh, $26 million was that to investors, and then the other was to the financial institutions, but over $170 million in interest to investors uh, since inception. Obviously, a lot of that went to Dieter and Danny and some of those early investors on 18%. So I think about three quarters of that 170, that's why they're sitting pretty now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Come back to the old days, please. Investors, there are no management fees to invest in our company, which sets us apart from many similar investments. Transparency is the key. We provide regular updates to our investors and it's an open door policy where you can come out at any time and have a look at our company, whether that's in Brisbane, Townsville or the Gold Coast. Uh, investors, you rank first in preference to be paid. So that's why that provides them the comfort to invest in our company. We've been really disciplined about reinvesting the profits and continue to do that with 75% of the net profits after tax continue to be reinvested back into the company. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. So if anybody didn't hear that question is that as we've grown over time and the numbers continue to grow, other institutions might be interested in our company. And do we attract that interest or, and would we ever consider selling out? Uh, so I'm 51 years of age. It's, and <laughs> believe it or not, Darren and I were sitting in our, my office yesterday He's relocated his family, and that's one of the questions that he was posing to me just just We obviously discussed this before he moved up, but he, he wants this to continue for the next 10 years because he loves what he's doing. Since Darren's joined the organisation, I, I still loved what I was doing previously, but it, it's awesome to be involved in. So at 51 years of age, when you've got a great team around you and you're having the time of your life and we're making a 25% compound return, it would have to be a large number. Now, if it was a large, let's just say somebody come in tomorrow and offered us $500 million to sell the company, would we consider it? Of course we would. But it would, that, we would, it's not our intention. What my intention is, I've got, I've got four daughters, one of them is amazing here. We just had a grandson, Thomas. But three of those girls do work in the business. If I could create or we could create a vehicle that transcends the generation and continues to do this, that's my number one goal. If I can't do that, that's fine. Then, then you consider that. But uh, I've still got a fire in my belly. It's burning. And uh, I've, a couple of goals, what we want to do. We want to grow the collections business. So it's got a debtor's book. There's three mandates that Darren had to come on board. One's to get our asset book to a billion dollars. The other one's to get our collections debtor's book to 500 million and to grow then into home loans into the future as we, as we continue to grow over the next 10 years and have a $5 billion home loan book. My goal is to turn that profit from $16 million into $100 million every year net profit before tax. So we're going to do that over the next 10 years. And we would love you to be a part of it and our investor base to be a part of that. I'll see you when you're 60. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh. 
Tea, coffee and dessert is going to be served shortly. Again, I value the relationships that we've had with all of you and I'm so grateful for the opportunity that you've provided us. Thank you very much.